How's your meditation going, John? Uh, Chris Clive is doing uh, great. He says he has nothing to report. He's just been doing it every day. How about you, Cheryl? Oh, good for you, Clive. Um, I've been, I've, yeah, I've, I've meditated every day since last week. Uh, it's been sort of all over the place as to what time, uh -huh. um, which isn't really not my plan really. But, um, again, I'm kind of off, off routine because my son is, has been visiting the last couple of days. Right. Um, uh -huh. but he's gone, he's gone now. So I think <laughs> hopefully I'll go back to first thing in the morning. Okay. Very good. Very good. And I was uh, saying to Clive when this started, uh, there's a way in which uh, getting to where you're doing this regularly is really where uh, meditation begins. You get used to using your mind and your attention and awareness in a different way. And that not only makes for nice meditation, that opens the door to deeper experiences in meditation and in your everyday life. Great. So, uh, you know, it's great uh, that you're doing it because we're having such problems uh, today now everything seems okay now i was just thinking about what to do and what to do and let's just proceed like we usually do and uh start with a nice meditation okay that's what we're here for so here we come and here's the chime and uh, just be present. Whatever happens is okay.
All right. Now, I was ready for that. Uh, we have to find a new rental, and uh, that has been uh, kind of filling my wife and my activities for the last few days, and that's more turmoil in my personal life than I like. And it was good to have a few minutes to meditate and stop. So it was just yeah. what I needed. Yeah. You, you're having to find a new what? A new uh, rental. We, oh, uh, a new rental. Yeah. We've been in a nice place for six years, but the owner is an old couple in the US and their heirs don't want to have uh, Mexican property in their estate. So they're going to sell the place out from under us and we need to find a new one. And uh, we our budget is uh, pretty low instead of pretty flexible. And so that makes it harder. There's stuff around. It's yeah. just that uh, yeah. just I know a lot of, about that. <laughs> yeah, anyway, a lot of details. Mm -hmm. And so today I'm going to actually talk about something that is going to be, I think, new to both of you. And uh, this is what Buddha calls Vedana, V-E-D-A-N-A, -A, is the Pali word that he used. And Vedana is mindfulness of feeling tone and is a starting point for your internal examination of your mental activities about things, feelings, and thoughts. Vedana was one of the four foundations of mindfulness that the Buddha put down in writing 2,500 years ago. And this mindfulness of feeling tone takes mindfulness to its second stage. What you have been doing, mindfulness of breath and body, is the first stage of mindfulness. Stage two is starting to understand the mind, your mental patterns and conditionings, and what leads to them. At further stages, you can start to see that you are actually free from all of this. Vedna can be translated as feeling tone. These are instinctual responses to sense objects, either physical or mental. They occur when you first make sense or mental contact with an object or idea. They appear as sensations, either as pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral. It is the first two that build desire and attachment, which are most important when it comes to how you live your life and your ability to free yourself from your own internal conditioning. Whenever we see, hear, or touch something, and when thoughts and feelings first arise, they are immediately accompanied by a sensation, a feeling tone that can be either pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral. This is Vedana. You are attracted, repulsed, or you just don't care. Sometimes these are overt and obvious, such as when we put a food in our mouth that we like or dislike, and there's an instant reaction to it. This is Vedana. It can arise in connection with thoughts and memories, which can also be pleasant 
or unpleasant. Just notice and reflect on the sensation. Is it pleasant or unpleasant? Vedana moves us to action and becomes the basis for the emotional responses and conditionings. So when we hear a sound, we might sense it is pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral. When we hear a different sound, we might have a different experience. We might have a thought about a loved one and experience pleasant. We might have a thought about taking out the garbage and experience unpleasant or neutral. This immediate reaction is Vedana. Vedana appears as a movement towards or a movement away from an object. For example, a cat. Yes, all living beings show this response. The cat gravitates to the warmest part of the room. You pick her up and move her, but she just returns to the warm spot again. This response is active in the formation of habits. A preferred habit is accompanied by a pleasant feeling and as such tends to be repeated. Thus, Vedana conditions our tastes, not only for food, but music, interests, views, and opinions of others. Just reflect on the sensation when hearing a view that you disagree with. Is it pleasant or unpleasant? As such, Vedana moves us to action and becomes the basis for the emotional responses and conditioning. Vedana moves us from the unpleasant towards the pleasant. Often, this is quite unconscious. Habits assert themselves through this mechanism. If we are unconscious of the rising of Vedana, then it simply takes over. Vedana being instinctual can bind us and become a problem. Like when we try to change a habit, like giving up smoking or going on a diet or start a meditation practice. Awareness of arising Vedana allows us to make a choice to either follow it or not, to contain it and act despite the fact that it may be momentarily unpleasant. This is a way we can modify our behavior. I think this is particularly important. If we are unconscious of the mechanism, then there is no choice available and we just act blindly, unaware that we're subject to this primitive response mechanism, our own internal conditioning. So we can train ourselves to become aware of the arising of this Vedana the pleasant, unpleasant, neutral sense. Most of the time it is quite subtle and we are only aware of the stronger manifestations of it. But over time and with persistence, even quite small arising of Vedana can be caught in awareness. And when it does, then the choice to follow or not becomes available. 
Thank you for subscribing to the Easier Softer Ways Daily Guided Meditations. Today we're going to practice Vedana, the second foundation of mindfulness, which is just a practice of noting the feeling tones of our experience. This then leads into the third foundation of looking at the mind's response or reaction. But it can be beneficial to just practice with Vedana in order to get a sense of these feeling tones that we have, that we experience. So you can begin by allowing your eyes to gently close, finding a comfortable meditation posture. You can take a few deep breaths through the nose, inhaling completely filling the lungs and then just letting go emptying the lungs emptying yourself of any emotional hangover from the day leaving all problems or situations be and just coming into this present moment as you're sitting here can bring some awareness to the body as it's sitting here whether you're in a chair or cushion noticing the points of contact where the feet may be touching the floor the weight of your body in the chair or cushion the feeling of your hands in your lap or touching each other on the knees Maybe the temperature of the air, a breeze, a warmth or a coolness. You know that you have a body, but how do you know that right now? What sensations are present that contribute to your sense of bodily awareness? And you can open the awareness up to include any thoughts you may have, sounds you hear, sensations in the body, anything that comes into your awareness. And just notice where the mind goes, where the attention is, what's happening. If it helps you, you can use a simple noting practice, just noting thinking, or knee, sound, not diving into the content, not allowing ourselves to become enveloped in it, rather just seeing what arises in experience naturally, there's no right or wrong answer, not looking to make anything happen but a gentle, relaxed, open awareness may sound something in your head like breath thought 
thought, sound, just finding a rhythm and noticing what's happening.
And you can add in the second foundation of mindfulness, Vedana. Just noting the feeling tone of each experience, simply pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral. Again, there's no right answer. And it's not always the same. Something you find pleasant in one moment may become unpleasant in another. If you don't know the feeling tone, you don't need to sit there and try to figure it out. Just leave it at neutral or don't know and move on. So in your head it may sound something like sound, pleasant, body, neutral, body, unpleasant, thought, unpleasant. Again, finding a rhythm that works for you. And just looking from a distance, not diving into it. Rather, just seeing kind of the content or mood of each experience.
of course the mind will wander. It's what the mind does. When this happens, you can just notice that it's wandering. Note if there's a feeling tone to it. Then come back to the practice. The mind wandering isn't separate from the practice, it's part of it. You can note wandering, unpleasant, or maybe you were having a pleasant thought, pleasant. You can always come back to the breath, using the breath as the anchor for the practice, or the body, feeling the sensations of the body sitting here in this present time, and just opening back up to this practice. If any judgment arises, any self-criticism, again, there's nothing wrong with that. Just notice it and notice the feeling tone.
Now, an exercise on Vedana. This exercise is simply about noticing whatever you're sensing or feeling at the moment you're feeling it with a gentle, non judgmental acceptance and curiosity. Notice the feeling tone and the feelings and thoughts that come with it. We'll start this exercise by becoming mindful of your breath. Allow yourself now to notice any emotions, mental feelings, or body feelings you're experiencing. If name for these emotions come, that's fine. If they don't, just be aware of them, even if they seem vague. Notice the feeling tone also. Notice where they are located in your body, your head, throat, chest, stomach, abdomen, gut. Notice if the physical sensation moves or drifts or shifts. Notice what they make you feel like. Nauseous, queasy, calm, relaxed, tense. Notice whether you are drawn to this feeling or want to avoid it. Notice any thoughts that come with the emotions. Be aware of them just as thoughts. Be curious and without judgment. Allow yourself to just sit with and notice with awareness the shifting and movement of thoughts, feelings, physical sensations in your body. In all this, Notice that you are the observer, the witness of the mind. No thought actually touches you. Thoughts have only the power that you give to them. Now I'm going to say some words. Notice for each word, your initial response, the immediate feeling tone, whether you are attracted to or want to avoid or don't care. Notice any body sensations or thoughts or images that arise and how they feel. Notice thoughts that come too. Here goes. Dog. Scorpion. Bird. Friend, dog poop, mother, flower, bumblebee, sunset, water. Rain, lake, 
family breakfast table bell song alarm clock All right, now let us close with a chant. Om Shanti, 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 Om. Peace, peace, peace. Very good. And I will see you next week. Until then, good meditations.